Hello, my name is Joseph Sharon, and I would like to speak with you about the Sotheby's uh, sale in Hong Kong on 10-3-2017. Uh, October 3rd 2017 they uh, they sold this flawed Ruware brush washer for approximately 38 million dollars it's a flawed piece and why I say it's a flawed piece because it was over fired and that's how you get that glassy surface in in the glaze and it has uh, flaws in the back in here some flaws here and flaws on the edge here uh, uh, glaze flaws and it's a flaw piece this this piece would have been sold to the population at a much cheaper price uh, from the root kiln they took all the flawed pieces and sold them to the population as uh, with a cheap price on them. Now, uh, I'm going to show you three three brush washers from my collection. Now, these are merchant wear pieces, and these pieces here are uh, merchant wares, and they have this sesame seed shape and size spur marks and they have this has impressed decorations on it and this piece has three spur marks sesame seed size and shape spur marks on the on the base and uh, it's a uh, little brush washer and here's another brush washer it has five spur marks and you can see the impressed uh, decorations on it and I know it has a dragon in there I can see a dragon and maybe a phoenix and uh, it's uh, these are three nice merchant wear pieces now merchant wares were the next step above the flawed pieces like this, they, they, uh, the merchant wares were sold to the wealthy merchants, and uh, these these flawed pieces were sold to the population. Now the next pieces they they produced was the tribute pieces, and the tribute pieces have fire gilted bands. Uh, on the rim and sometimes on the base also and uh, here's three uh, tribute wares and now this piece has the, the spur marks the five spur marks on the base here and it's a, uh, a celadine glaze bluish green glaze and here's a uh, another piece here it it has a mark on the base and uh, the marks is uh, uh, Fen Wang which means tribute to the ruler which is tribute to the Emperor and this piece they all have the fire gilted bands and they're corroded with uh, encrusted with Cuprite and malachite, and this cannot be reproduced in any way. It only happens in nature, and from the book uh, from the book uh, uh, Copper and Bronze in Art by David Scott, the existence of malachite formation over a layer of cuprite is supported by analytical and metallographic studies as a good indication of the authenticity of the artifact. So that proves that these pieces are old artifacts. 
and uh, it can't be done in no other way except nature. And here's another piece here, and this is a tribute piece. And uh, th these are one step above the merchant class pieces. These are one step above the merchant class and two steps above the uh, the the uh, piece that uh, Sotheby sold in in, in uh, Hong Kong for thirty eight million dollars. Uh, I'm going to show you something else here too. Now this this piece is a very fine piece, but they did pieces where they embellished them with painting, uh, and uh, this piece was embellished with gilt painting, and uh, they trimmed it off with gilt. And this has a mark on the base also and the mark has nine characters in that little mark which they're very fi finely done and uh, just a beautiful exquisite little vase uh, now I'm going to show you three other pieces now these three pieces are the best pieces the Rue Kiln could produce. These are the uh, these are tribute wares, but these pieces have no crackle. Uh, most of the pieces that came out of the kilns had had some crackle to them. These pieces have no crackle whatsoever, and. Uh, these are the finest pieces the root kiln produced, and uh, according to Sotheby's, they they uh, uh, they show the, the the worst possible pieces, uh, and and these are the the finest pieces that the root kiln produced uh, in the Song Dynasty, and that's why they were so famous because they produced wares like this, which people wrote about and talked about but they were quite rare ones without out any crackle whatsoever there's one other piece that i know of in the palace museum and has no crackle it doesn't have the fire gilted bands which these pieces have so it, it either lost the band or it was taken off or it, but it doesn't have the fire gilted band and it it's not it's a more of a merchant wear piece than a tribute piece so it's not a tribute piece but it has no crackle in the glaze which these have no crackle in it it's one uh, narcissist bowl they have in their collection at the palace museum in, in uh, taiwan but uh, i wanted to show you these pieces because they're so fabulous and they have the uh, the sperm marks are very very finely finely done they're very tiny they're not like the other pieces where the big fat uh, spur marks these were exquisitely done the pieces were are magnificently uh, potted they're just beautifully potted and glazed to perfection and uh, these are the best wares that the root kiln produced not the best pieces, the best the best wares they produced, but they did. These aren't the imperial pieces. I'm going to show you the imperial pieces, but in the meantime, I challenge anyone that's an authority in rue wear to come sit down with me and uh, go over my collection. They won't sit down with me because they know I'm telling the truth. Uh, that Sotheby's is, is uh, committing fraud against collectors by saying there's only four in private hands. That's what they have recorded. That's what they have recorded. They don't know what's out there. And the, and the truth is there's plenty out there. There's a lot more than what they, they claim there is. 
And out of all those 80 or 90 pieces that they have, a little less than 100 pieces uh, they have recorded, most of them are flawed pieces. Flawed pieces that were sold to the population. Now, uh, none of these pieces here I just showed you have uh, crushed agate stone. That's another lie that they uh, perpetrated. None of these pieces have crushed agate stone in the glaze. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you this is the cuprate malachite, how this grows uh, in, in the encrustation. Uh, grows it, it starts out with a reddish cuprate and the green grows on top of the red and that's the only way it occurs and this is uh, a piece that was magnified about a couple of hundred times and uh, just to show you that uh, uh, how it looks on a lot of pieces looks th this way and other pieces look a little bit different but this is this is what it's about and uh, uh, I'm going to show you now I'm going to show you the imperial pieces now these are the pieces that the Emperor Huzan commissioned the root kiln to produce for him and his court exclusively now uh, these pieces are very modest very finely done Many of the forms have never been seen uh, throughout the history of China because these, these forms were just not seen. They were only kept in the court. And uh, uh, so they have some unique forms to them. And this, this, uh, show you just how these look and I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up but let me set these aside a little bit here and these are the root kiln pieces the imperial pieces from the root kiln that the Emperor Huzan commissioned the root kiln to produce for him and his court now these pieces many of them are marked on the base they didn't, they didn't glaze the foot rings because he didn't want the spur marks on these pieces. He wanted them fired flat in the kiln and they have like a, a, a grayish color biscuit that uh, uh, turned brown in the firing of the piece. And, and this, this, this piece says uh, Fen Hua, which means tribute to China. And many pieces are, are marked like that Fenwa with the Fenwa mark. But these pieces, the imperial pieces, all have the crushed agate stone in the glaze. And uh, this particular piece here has a small area which it uh, has a small area of glaze that's stuck to the base here from the kiln and this is it magnified about 200 times that's the foot ring and it shows the tiny chips of uh, agate and this is larger you can see the blue agate chips there but if you take a uh, a uh, loop and you look in in these pieces you can see tiny glints of light that come off the piece and that shows the the agate flakes of agate that is left in the glaze because uh, agate agate stone did not melt in 12 or 1400 degree kilns it, it took it takes it would take 2200 degrees for agate stone to melt so it the agate does not melt in the glaze like uh, Sotheby's is trying to tell people um, 
and these pieces are absolutely exquisite pieces but each one has its own character and the, the Emperor who's on he com he commissioned the, the uh, root kiln he looks at these pieces he wanted them very simplistic he wanted them to be almost emulate human beings with all their flaws he kept everything in the court if they had flaws it didn't matter he saw beauty in each piece uh, if it had flaws or not so this is why he 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 uh, none of these pieces reached out of the court at all uh, while Huzan was in power which he he lost his power he was overrun by the Jin armies and was captured and died in captivity but uh, uh, the Emperor saw beauty in all these pieces and these you can see some of these forms here that they produced and uh, just magnificent pieces but I just wanted to emphasize anybody can come and see me that's a that's a, a recognized expert in rootware I'll sit down with them and they can go over my collection if they think people think I'm lying come sit with me Sotheby's and we'll talk about rootware uh, I doubt very much if they will but here's my challenge to them come visit me we'll sit down we'll tape record and put it on YouTube and let the people determine who's telling the truth after we're done talking about rootware and and the collection that, that I have that I've uh, put together and that's about it and you can go to my uh, website at ChineseMasterpieces.com and uh, uh, get further information on rootware and other pieces that I have uh, I, I wanted to show you one other thing that uh, this dingware piece that sought to be sold during the same auction it sold for two million three hundred thousand and it has a, a, a copper band around it but it's very very uh, um, deteriorated and it has a little bit of malachite they talk about the malachite Sotheby talks about the malachite the malachite under the malachite is cuprate it has to be because the malachite can't form alone but they didn't mention the cuprate and and uh, this is this is why I say it's a it's it, it tells you these these pieces are uh, ancient pieces and it's very clear you can't uh, hide that or duplicate that in any way shape or form and I'd like to thank you for watching the video and I hope it's helpful to you